What up, what up, Wembley here. And throughout my career, I've had the privilege of animating for Transformers on several of the cartoon properties, but most recently with the Unreal Engine 5.6 update, there is a new feature in here that should make this process a lot simpler. Now this Autobot animation isn't official. This one I did strictly for this tutorial is showing you how we can use the logo within a placement tool to do these type of animations. All right, so to get started, we're inside of Unreal Engine 5.6. We're in the Unreal Project Browser. I'm in Film, Video, and Live Events. And right up here at the top, we wanna make sure that we're using the motion design template. So now I'm just gonna create a new project. And once it's opened up, this is what you're gonna be greeted with. So I'm gonna come down here to my content browser. Let me raise this up. And if you don't have your content browser, down here in the lower left, you just click on this. And then over on the right, you can just dock it into your layout and it's gonna do exactly this. So instead of my motion design folder, I'm gonna to go to maps and I'm just gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna right click here, make a new level. And then I'm just gonna double click on it. And I'm gonna save selected. So now we have a blank slate to work with. And so to get this started, we're gonna come up here to the top where it says motion design. I'm gonna left click right here. And now we're officially inside the motion design template, but we don't have our camera lights set up. So over here where it says create defaults, I'm gonna left click on this. And then I'm just gonna hit spawn to add everything into our scene. Now, typically your details panel will be over here too, but I separated it out just so I could see everything side by side when I have it selected. Now for this next tip, I wanna give a big shout out to Aaron Robedowitz because he did help me out with this one. This one had me stuck. So as you can see, I'm inside of Cinema 4D right now and I have my logo all fractured up. And the main thing is you wanna make sure your null is in the center of all your objects before we bring it over to Unreal Engine. Now I know we can fracture stuff up inside of Unreal, but I prefer to do it inside of Cinema. I just have a little bit more control here and I'm more familiar with it. But you can see over here my objects panel, I have like 155 fractured objects in here from my Transformers logo. And all you have to do is go up to file and save it out as an FBX. Now I'll use Cinema, but feel free to use anything you want, Maya, Blender, it doesn't really matter. But once we are inside of Unreal, there's a certain way that we want to import it to make sure that our nulls are going to stay exactly as they should be. So up here in the top left where we have file, I'm gonna come down to here where it says import in the level. Now this is the way that we want to import an FBX. So I'm going to left click on this. And I'm going to look for my FBX that I saved out, which will be this version two one right here. I'm going to left click on this and I'm going to click on open. Now with this opened up, I did make a folder beforehand called FBX. So I'm just going to save it here, but feel free to save it anywhere you want. Now I'm going to click on okay. Now this is gonna be important right here with the FBX scene import options. If I click on static mesh right here where it says normal import method, I wanna click on compute normals and I wanna import the normals. Now, if I didn't select that, when you bring in your model, sometimes it's gonna look all different combobulated and not gonna look correct. So you wanna make sure you select that and it's gonna import everything as it should be. Now I'm gonna come over here to skeletal meshes because under animation, I'm gonna turn this off because I don't have any animation happening inside of my Cinema 4D. Okay, so now that we have this turned off, I'm gonna go all the way back to the beginning at scene because this is another important one where it says hierarchy type if it says create one blueprint asset we want to turn that off and we want to come up here to the top where it says create level actors so left click on this and then now i'm going to click on import and once it's done down in my folder you should see i have 155 different meshes down here each one of those fractured pieces got brought in separately i'm going to come over here and set my outliner select the top scroll all the way down to the bottom hold down the shift key left click, and then I'm just gonna rotate this. So I'm gonna come up here to where we have a rotational tool. I'm just gonna rotate this around and now I'm gonna unselect it. So now you can see that we have our Transformers logo the way that it should look inside our Unreal Engine. So now on the left-hand side under cloners, we have a couple of different options in here now. The one right here, the one that says free placement is the one that we wanna use. So I'm gonna double click on this and now you can see it happens to be inside of the center of our viewport. And if we look over here inside of our outliner, all the way down here at the bottom, we have our cloner. So I'm gonna select the cloner. So we have our default clone down here. I'm just gonna take this and delete it. And then I'm gonna take all these fractured pieces and I'm gonna put this inside the cloner. So let me scroll all the way up here to the top, select, scroll all the way down here to the bottom, hold down the shift, select it, make sure you have everything selected here. And now I'm gonna bring it into our cloner. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it into our cloner down here. And once we do that, you can see we have the outline here, but let me select this off. So I'm gonna click off in my viewport and we no longer see it. So sometimes it's gonna glitch out like that because I have a ton of pieces in here. So what I'm gonna do is come back over here under my details panel where it says layout under free placement. I'm just gonna click on grid. And after it's done preparing the shaders, we see that we have our fragments in here. So now if I come back to layout under grid, 
click on free placement. Now everything's the way that it should be. So that's just a glitch that I found. Like if I just had a couple of items in there, everything worked out perfectly. But if you had like a ton, like I have 155 pieces of mesh, sometimes it would glitch out. So just reset it the way I showed you and you should be good. So the setup is really simple. So if I look and I click on each of my pieces, you can see that each one of these fragments, the null is exactly in the center as it should be. That's the way we had it set up inside of cinema. So now if we come back over to our cloner and we come down here to where it says effector, I'm going to create length effector. So I'm going to select this. And right now we have a sphere effector in here. So I have my inner radius at 200, outer radius at 350, just to have a nice fall off in here. And instead of my easing, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more sporadic. So maybe let's just do bounce in. Let's see what happens when we do that. And down here under mode, I'm just gonna leave it at offset, but feel free to experiment with any of these in here. And for my offset right here on my Z axis, I'm just gonna move it up. And you can see that it takes the whole logo up, but once we start moving our actual effector, so right here under my location, I'm just gonna move the Z. And now you can see that it's actually falling into place. So this is how I had it set up for the example I showed at the top. Let me put this back at zero like that. And then let's make this go off screen. So maybe around like 2000 inside of the offset. Now, once I start moving, you can see now everything is starting to stack into place. So you can see where this is going to get really powerful. Everything's going into the exact spot that it should be. And if you want to experiment a little bit, maybe down here with rotation, you can move this around. So now you see the pieces that are inside the effector are starting to rotate and move this over like that. So now if you start moving it, now we're getting like a more interesting effect as our leg is starting to build on. And down here under delay, we can also stack this as well. So if I come on delay, let me put this at zero and now I'm just gonna move it up and watch what happens. See how it's starting to give like that spring effect. So now we're able to control like our delay effector on here. So the placement cloner is pretty straightforward, but if you want to add a little bit more pizzazz to it and start playing with the materials, let me show you how to get that set up. So down here inside of my content browser, I'm just going to make a new material. So I'm going to right click, come up here to material, and I'm just going to name this one glow because that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a glow as it starts to compile together. So I'm going to double click on this material and inside of here, inside of my material graph, I'm going to hold down a three key and left click and that's gonna bring up our constant three vector. So I'm gonna connect this to my base color because this is how I like to do the color still. It's old school, but the way that I like to do it. So let's just say we wanna make it purple, maybe like Decepticon color. And then once it turns, you know, red, like the Autobots, everything will be nice. So right there, I have my vector three as my purple color. And then down here, inside of my material graph, I'm gonna hold down the L key, left click, and that's gonna bring up our LERP node. And this is what we wanna put inside of our emissive color. So I'm gonna take this, put it into the emissive color. And you can see now we're starting to get a white glow on here, but there's a couple more nodes we need to add. So I'm gonna hold down the M key, left click, and that's gonna bring up multiply. So now I'm gonna connect this to my B node here. Let me scoot this over because we're gonna hold down three again and make another vector three. So hold down three and left click. Gonna put this in the hair. And actually I got that mixed up. So my base color, I'm gonna make this red, like the Autobots. And then this one, I'm gonna make purple. So the purple is gonna be like the glowing color. And then the base color is what it's gonna settle on. So now down here under multiply, if I hold down the one key, left click, now that's gonna bring up our vector one. And this is gonna be how we could control the glow. So now that we have it connected inside of here, if I put my value up to like 15, you can see now it's starting to add a glow in there. And there's one more thing that we need to add that's gonna control everything once we have it inside of our cloner. So we're gonna right click down in our material graph and we're gonna look up cloner. And once you type in cloner, you should see this one that says cloner effector parameters. So I'm gonna left click on this one. And I would say just experiment with a lot of these. Like the one that I'm using is gonna be effector total weight. I'm gonna left click and drop this into my alpha channel. And what this does is once I start moving my effector on my cloner, it's gonna adjust that glow accordingly. So I'm just gonna come up here and save this. And I'm gonna minimize this for right now. And then inside of my cloner, I wanna select all my meshes again. So all my fractures, I'm gonna select those. And then I'm gonna take that glow material I just made. I'm gonna left click, drag it into my element. And there we go. So now if I come back to my effector and I start moving it, so I'm put it back at zero. Let me slowly move this down. You can see that we have a glowing purple effect. And as we start moving it down, it's going to compile it into the red. So if we don't want it to only come from the north, we can have it come from the side as well. Maybe come in directly from behind the camera just to jazz it up a little bit. 
So now you can see how we're getting like this cool glowing effect going from purple to red. But if we really want to exaggerate the glow, you're going to have to come over here inside your post process volume. So I'm going to left click on this and down here under bloom, I'm going to select method and I'm going to turn on intensity. Now there's two different methods. You could use standard or convolution, just depending on what you want. Usually convolution's a little bit more cinematic, but I'm going to leave it on standard for now. Just going to raise up the intensity and you can see we're getting uh, like a hot glow in here. So let me come back down here. We can see how the glow is starting to build on to our logo there. If I come back into my material, I just bumped it up to like 30, but let's do like 50, see what that looks like. We're just playing around at this point, but now you can see we're starting to get a really exaggerated glow in here. Let me actually exit this out. I'm just gonna move the effector one last time. So now we can see how we're building on our Transformers logo. And this is all animatable too, right? Cause we have the keyframes there. So let me put this back at zero, open up my sequencer. I'm just going to put a keyframe on here. Let's move this all the way to the end, somewhere around there. And then we could just start scrolling this down so it builds on like that. Add another keyframe. Now, if we play it inside of our sequencer, this is all going to be ready for rendering out. Now, I've seen on Discord and inside the forums, a lot of people are asking for this effect. So hopefully this helps you guys out, get it set up with the material, get it set up with the free placement, and you can make some really cool logo animations or anything that you want to set up. So if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in that next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.